So talking about shifting time zones, how big do you think the entire solar system is? Mahusin. <laughs> it is pretty big. Have a guess. Ballpark. What do you uh, think? A hundred times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So what's that? Fifteen billion kilometres. Well, they actually measure it at ten trillion kilometres. That's a light year across. Wow. But what on Earth does a light year mean? I wanted to try and explore that on a more human scale. And annoyingly, for some reason, NASA wouldn't lend me a space shuttle. So. I had to go to the Royal Observatory in Greenwich to start a journey that's going to take me to the very edge of the solar system. But first, a quick history lesson. Absolutely love this. It's called an orrery. And uh, it's a little mechanical model of our solar system. You can see the planets here orbiting the sun as they would do in real life. But it's more than just a little interesting knick-knack. It's actually the result of arguably the greatest revolution in the entire history of science. Before the 17th century, most people believed in a geocentric universe with the Earth slap bang in the middle and everything else orbiting around it, including our sun. It's only when the big guns, Copernicus, Galileo and Kepler came along that our understanding shifted to a heliocentric model with the sun at the centre of things and the earth and the other planets orbiting it. Like that. But there's something wrong with this orrery. It's scale. All the planets are far too close together. Let me demonstrate how they should be spaced out with a scale model of my own. Now, our sun is a fairly average-sized star. There's much bigger stars than ours in the universe. So let's represent it with this football. How far would you have to travel away from our sun football here before we reach the first planet, Mercury? Well, on this scale, every metre is three million kilometres. So the answer is... 18 metres, which is the equivalent of 56 million kilometres. Now, if the sun was the size of our football up there, then Mercury, by comparison, would be about the size of this grain of sand. Another 19 metres, or 52 million kilometres, you arrive at Venus. And it's not very big, about the size of this nut. Another 15 metres, or 42 million kilometres, you come to the most incredible planet in our solar system. A place that 6.8 billion people might find strangely familiar. But how big is the Earth compared to our football sun over there? Well, not very big at all, really. About the size of this pea. OK, next up, about 234 million kilometres from the sun, the mighty Mars. And it's only the size of this tiny, insignificant grain of rice. Mars represents the final frontier of the rocky inner planets. But as we move further away from the sun into the darkness of space, the planets are mainly made up of gas. First up, right at the edge of the park, it's Jupiter. 259 metres from our football-sized sun, 777 million kilometres in the real world. It's 11 times the size of the Earth, which makes it the giant of the solar system, which on this scale is about the size of this golf ball. Like Jupiter, the next giant of the solar system is mainly made up of gases like hydrogen and helium. You'll find it just down the street, outside the park, and it's called Saturn. It's 472 metres from our football, and that's... 1.5 thousand million kilometres from the sun, and about the size of this table tennis ball, but with some of them nice rings going around it. Finally, I'm in Greenwich Town proper. Next up is a lump of ice and rock, more formally known as... Uranus! It's about a kilometre from our football over there, or 2.8 thousand million kilometres from the sun. It's starting to get very cold, and it's very dark. After that, 2.2 clicks from our football is Neptune, another icy lump the size of a grape, probably a, a white one. OK, so travelling out from the Greenwich Observatory where we started with our football-sized sun, we've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. 
And until 2006, there was one more planet in our solar system, but not anymore. Over there by the dome is poor old Pluto, everybody's favourite demoted planet, some two kilometres away from our football sun. That's 6,000 million kilometres away from the real sun and smaller than the tiniest grain of sand. But the solar system doesn't stop there. The journey from my football sun has only just begun. Way out beyond Pluto, there's the Oort cloud, made up of trillions of small, dirty snowballs locked into orbit around our sun. Now, no one is quite sure how far it extends, but estimates range from between one and 200,000 times further from the sun than the Earth is, which means on our scale, it may end up somewhere here, in the deserts of the Western USA. But what about beyond the solar system? How far is it to the nearest star? Well, it's called Proxima Centauri, and it's so dim you can't even see it with the naked eye. At 4.2 light years away, it's a long way off, even on our football scale. Over 14,000 kilometres, in fact, which is why, even though I've just cycled all the way from Greenwich to the edge of the Pacific, here in San Francisco, I still wouldn't have gone far enough. In fact, I'd have to go about another 2,500 kilometres past Hawaii, out there somewhere. In terms of size, quite small actually compared to our football sun because it's a red dwarf about the size of this hockey ball. 